I mean, what the hell? Gemini. 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 I, I don't know how you pronounce it. Gemini. Uh, Gemini is Google's um, uh, Google's um, AI, uh, the competitor for Chat GPT. It also uh, it it has been uh, it, it was a rebranding uh, and a new version that was released I think last week. Gemini. 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 Okay. Gemini. Gemini. All right. Gemini um, uh, also released a new version. Uh, they replaced Bard, if you remember, they had it was called Bard, and as part of the new version, they included a image generator. There was an image generator as part of this, and uh, this created a huge furor because people started searching stuff on the image generator in particular, and <laughs> uh, the image generator kind of seemed to refuse to produce images of like white people. So, for example, you ask the image generator to portray Nazis, and they had a, a, a you know a, a multi-ethnic presentation of uh, Nazis. Blonde, blue eye, white was not one of the uh, presentation uh, presentations. Uh, they asked, I think, about Vikings, and again, there were black Vikings and Asian Vikings and all kinds of Vikings, and uh, so it was. It it had somewhere in its code. It had this always make sure that it, when presenting images of human beings, it, there is, um, there is um, diversity. And it, it's, it's an idiot, right? Because it is ultimately AI, so it's stupid. It took that literally. So uh, th when presenting Nazis, we have diversity. When we present Vikings, we have diversity. And so everywhere it, it, it presented... Uh, diversity and it became and and it was like almost impossible to get it to actually generate an image of a white person whites a majority and it was told to generate diverse and white is not that part anyway it, it pretty ludicrous uh, stupid uh, ridiculous and of course this brought out uh, uh, you know everybody uh, accusing google of woke and everything and it, and it's true they are i mean that is that is an actual reality uh that um uh, if you, uh, uh, you know, people who work at big tech, people who work inside big tech, we've talked about this, hold philosophical, ideological positions that tend to be quite far to the left. Uh, that is a reality. Why? Because they go to universities. Why? Because the left seems to dominate smart people, uh, in, in particular, uh, you know, programmers or, or in particular people who've being successful as programmers? I, I don't know what the answer to that is, but if you survey Silicon Valley, a vast, vast majority of the people there are left, and some of them are wacky left, wacky crazy left, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, it's something, I think, <clears throat> that if, you, uh, if you're convinced that the left is wrong and the right is right, and I did a whole show about how left and right uh, in in a sense, useless concept because they don't actually reflect a um, a spectrum. But if you if you hold that somehow, then the right has a lot of explaining to do. Why doesn't the right attract smart people, educated people, people who have important positions in important companies? What what is what is so deficient about the right that it is unattractive to people like that? And I know the answer to that. I think many of you know the answer to that. But but that's an important thing that I think the right needs to grapple with, right? It needs to grapple with. Anyway, uh, so Gemini it was is is kind of uh, you know the image generator was obviously nuts. So they withdrew the image generator and they've left uh, the the uh, the uh, Gemini um, uh, you know chat thing, uh, the the AI chat. Uh, it, where you can ask it questions and stuff. And a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of commentary about how it is unbelievably biased. And, uh, it, but it, it's hard for me to tell. And it's generally hard to tell when you see these things on Twitter or elsewhere. Uh, is it real? Is it general? Because, you know, you could replicate the search. Problem with, all these AI uh, tools is every time you ask it a question, it gives you a different answer. They might be consistent answers, but they're different. 
Uh, so it's, it's hard to replicate what people are posting, and it's not clear that what they're posting is real. So uh, I'm hesitant, but is there, is there any question that Gemini is biased to the left? No, it's left is biased. The people managing the project tend to be on the left. Uh, they have put in rules and guidelines that generally generate more leftist-leaning answers. But I, I, I ran my own test. Right, so I figured I'll, I'll run a test. I, I mean, here's one example, right? Uh, India got upset. India's called in Google uh, managers because it's very upset because uh, when in an article uh, describing uh, Modi, the the Prime Minister of India, um, one of the one of the answers uh, had quote uh, that Modi had, was quote accused of implementing policies some experts have characterized as fascist. Now, I think that's pretty factual. Some experts have characterized it as being fascist, and suddenly, you know, Modi's pretty much a statist, and the elements of what he's doing that are fascist. Uh, so, it, but the Indian government flipped out. It's you know, this is this is leftist propaganda. Stop it. Anyway, I ran a test. So uh, uh, I asked. Um, I asked it uh, just a few qu simple questions on stuff that I actually know. Who is Yvonne Brooke? Um, it did a pretty good answer, uh, you know, but then at the end it says something that I think, I don't think is non objective. It says it's important to note that Brooke's views on various topics, particularly economics and politics, can be controversial and generate strong reactions. Yeah. Uh, it's recommended to explore his work and engage with diverse perspectives to form your own informed opinions. Yeah, I don't disagree with any of that. Um, then I asked him, what, what, are, what are Iran Brooks' most controversial views? What well, picked laissez-faire capitalism, income inequality, objectivism, and views on social issues, including same-sex marriage and abortion, which, you know, those are controversial to the right, not to the left. So that was pretty cool. I mean, and that doesn't show bias. And again, it has, it's good to just remember that these are just a few examples and specific aspects of Brooks' views considered controversial will depend on individual preferences and ideological leanings. It's also important to note that Brooks himself might not necessarily agree with the characterization of his views as controversial. He likely sees them as well-reasoned and logical positions based on his underlying philosophy and economic beliefs. For a more nuanced understanding, it's recommended to explore Brooks' works directly, engage with diverse perspectives, and form your own informed opinions on the topic he addresses. I'd say, not bad. Not bad. Um, then I asked her, what are Iran Brooks' views on war? And again, I think, wow, it did a good job. You know, war of self-defense. Brook believes that nations have the moral right to engage in wars only in self-defense. That is when their existence or way of life is directly threatened. This means preemptive strikes are not typically justified unless there's undeniable evidence of an imminent attack. That's interesting. I'm not sure where she took that, but, or he or whatever. The, uh, the importance of clarity. Brooks emphasizes the need for clear, well-defined war aims and a rational strategy. Wars cannot be fought for vague motivations or unclear objectives. Pretty good. Um, individualism within the context of war. Brooke argues that war should be ways to define, to defend individualism, meaning the rights and freedoms of individual citizens against aggression. He opposes war f wars fought to impose collective ideologies or to pursue abstract principles not directly related to the defense of the nation. Pretty good. <laughs> Anti-imperialism. Expanding on his belief in individual liberty, Brooke is strongly opposed to interventionist wars and attempts to impose them, that attempt to impose democracy, a particular way of life on other nations. He believes that a country should only fight militarily if its own existence or freedom is at stake. I mean, these are pretty good answers. Now, I asked the same thing on my laptop earlier, and I got different answers. So again, every time you ask it, it gets a little different, but they're not that bad. And at the end, it, say, it, it, it says it doesn't have, it says important notes. Your own book's views are based on a philosophical system objectivism that may not align with everybody's worldview. It's essential to consider the criticism and complexity surrounding his statements, particularly regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. You can find further information in Iran's views on war by listening to his podcasts, visiting the Ayn Rand Institute website, or reading his articles. 
I mean, I don't know how you get much fairer than that. I mean, most people I would ask who, who know a little bit about me would probably give a worse answer than that. Um, I asked who is Ayn Rand, a pretty good answer. Uh, and and at, the, at the end of this answer, it says, legacy, despite the controversy, Ayn Rand's works continue to be widely read and debated. Her novels have sold millions of copies, and the Ayn Rand Institute, uh, Institute dedicated to promoting objectivism is active in advocating for her ideas. However, it's important to be aware that, it, that the criticism surrounding her work and form your own informed opinion based on different perspectives. All right, let's see, was there anything... I mean, when you ask about uh, anti-Semitism, it, it gives pretty vague. It doesn't want to really blame the left for too much anti-Semitism, although it does say, and, and at the end it says, it, it says, uh, you know, don't conflate criticizing Israel with anti-Semitism. It wants to make sure that's the right. When I asked what is woke, it gave a pretty good answer for what is woke, right? Uh, and... Uh, uh, I don't think it was particularly biased in terms of what is woke. Yeah, I mean, a, a right-wing AI would give a different interpretation, but it wasn't horrible. Same with what is social justice. It's, it's definitely slanted. And you don't get at the end, you know, think for yourself, investigate different opinions about these things. You don't get that for woke, uh, and you don't get that for social justice. You get it for your own book, but not for that. Um, and... Uh, I asked her what the social justice views of Israel is, and it gave, and you know, and uh, you know, at the, at the end it says it's essential to remember that Israel-Palestinian conflict is exceedingly complex, with valid concerns and perspective on both sides. If you seek a comprehensive understanding, it's necessary to explore various views, and be mindful of the sensitivity surrounding this topic. And you could go on and on and on. So I'm sure. It gives horrible answers on some questions, and you can probably search long enough and get something really, really horrible. But um, <laughs> but most answers, most of the questions I've asked, and the same thing is true of ChatGPT. I got reasonable answers to, not the answers maybe I would give, but I don't expect that. I, I think uh, interesting, and these are amazing tools. Um, if it's systematically biased in subtle ways, which I think it probably is, the, the, you got to be aware of that, and you got to think about that, and you got to be just like you when you listen to the news or you read a newspaper, do anything like that. You've got to be aware of the fact that any source of information you get has some bias or is likely to have bias, and usually of the left-leaning kind, if it's in the media. The same thing is true of AI, and you got to take that into account, and you got to adjust for it. The challenge is, of course, for people who don't can't do that or don't know how to do that, and and I don't know how you fix that. The, the, the everything, uh, you know, it's very hard, short of objectivism and being objective, for people not to have a real bias around these things, and you know, I don't know how you fix it. I don't know that there is an easy way or, or, or a way in the culture we live in today to fix it other than for you as consumers of information to be hyper vigilant about Elon's AI is going to be just as biased as any of these other AI. Uh, no more, uh, no less biased than Fox was, you know, uh, 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 non-biased. Elon's not objective. Neither is any media source that I know of. But Elon Musk is super non-objective and uh, super inclined to being flippant and flippancy, which is not objective. So, uh, no, I don't think Elon is going to solve this problem. I don't think anybody today is going to solve this problem. I think it's a problem one has to uh, it, it, it compute into whatever use you're making of AI. You've, you've got to take this into account. Okay.